Uh, welcome to the program, Gulno Ibet. Welcome back to our program. Uh, let me start by asking you. Hello. Are you prepared? for what might in fact be a, a massacre if indeed civilians are being called, as you heard, to protect and defend in a human shield against your forces? Well, Christian, there's so much misinformation about this operation, this Operation Peace Spring that we've just undertaken. Turkey is the only actor in the region with the largest border with Syria. And from the very beginning, we're the only uh, actor in the region who's had a consistent policy towards Syria. And that has consisted of two parts. Firstly, we said we would never allow a terror corridor to form on our border. And secondly, that we would establish uh, a safe zone for the return of Syrian refugees of 4 million, which we host mm -hmm. in our country. Right. And we've consistently said that this is our policy. And now the time has come to implement this policy. And we have tried to implement that policy, uh, working with regional countries and with our allies, but it has not worked out. And at the end, we had to take matters in our own hands. But when I said about the misinformation, I'd also like to point out the way that you introduced the whole issue of this operation. This is not an operation against Syrian Kurds. The YPG is equal to the PKK, which is a terrorist organization, as recognized by the United States and the European Union. Mm -hmm. And in fact, your former defense secretary, uh, Ash Carter, admitted that the YPG and the PKK were one of the same. And this organization has been launching attacks against Turkey, a NATO ally. Thousands of our citizens have died because of attacks from this terrorist organization. They've used the vacuum in uh, Syria to attack us and we have had to take matters into our own hands. There are, in fact, 300,000 Syrian Kurds right now in Turkey, refugees who have fled from ISIS and from the YPG. We're taking care of them. I'd like to ask you, which European country would take in 300,000 Kurdish refugees from Syria? But we have. Our war is not with the Kurds. And this is not an invasion. It's an operation under Article 51 uh, of the United Nations, which uh, regards our legitimate right to self-defense. Right. Well, you've, you've now given me the entire rationale for the Turkish government's uh, operation there. But you didn't answer my question. First of all, as you know better than I do, the United States does not consider the YPG terrorists. They do consider the PKK, but they have partnered with them in the fight against ISIS. So there is a distinction that they make between those two different Kurdish forces. Um, are you prepared? Not oh, no, no, exactly. hold on a second. Miss Ibad, I need to ask you questions here. Are you, pre can you tell us, please, what your intentions are then? How far are you going to move into northern Syria? How long, how deep, what are you going to do? Well, we have discussed this very openly, and President Erdogan has actually even shown a map with regards to the proposed establishment of the safe zone, which is exactly why we're undertaking this operation. It, it is something that he discussed with President Trump, and both presidents agreed. It's going to be about 20 miles in depth and just over 400 kilometers long. So um, there's, there's really no secret about uh, the, the depth and uh, the, okay. uh, the actual size of this operation. OK, so do you have the capacity? Most people don't believe you have the willingness or the capacity to actually... Hold on a second. You're nodding your head. I haven't even finished my question. To take on the 11,000 ISIS fighters who remain in that area and to police the 70,000 people in the Al Hall refugee camp, including women, children, ISIS uh, brides, if you like, and what is being called a nucleus of an ISIS resurgent force. Is Turkey prepared to take on that? Look, I think, first of all, we have to be clear about one thing. Um, we're not sure exactly about the numbers of ISIS families and fighters that are being kept there, apart from information that is predominantly put out by uh, the terrorist organization. No, no, and this is I the United exactly, States. Um, Miss Ibet, these are international figures. Sorry. I just want to know, let's not get quibbling about the figures. Yeah. The YPG, which has been fighting and dying against 
in the fight against ISIS now says it's not going to do it because it's going to have to defend itself. Then we know from the Inspector General and others that there are thousands of ISIS fighters still in the northern Syria area. And we know, because we visited it, CNN and other reporters have visited, that the al Hol refugee camp contains some 70,000 people. And it's being described in part as a possible nucleus of resurgent ISIS. I want to know what Turkey is going to do about those fighters and those people in that camp. First of all, let me start with our capacity. We're the second largest army in NATO, and we've already undertaken two successful military operations uh, to safeguard our borders from terrorism, ISIS and the PKK in Afrin and also uh, in Euphrates Shield. And we've provided security and stabilized those areas. And in fact, we're the only member of the international coalition against ISIS that's cleared more than 2,000 square kilometers of an area single-handedly by ourselves uh, from ISIS. So we are already very well grounded in dealing with ISIS. We're also dealing with ISIS very well in our own country. Uh, we have actually expelled over 5,000 and detained others. So uh, we're right next door to all of this. So mm -hmm. you can imagine we do have the capacity to deal with this. Now, in terms of the ISIS fighters, and there's predominantly uh, the families there that are in these camps. And some fighters are actually held in prisons, which are closer to our border. Of course, initially, as we move in, our pr priority is to provide security and stability mm -hmm. in the areas that we move into. And we are going to, we do have the capacity and we will safeguard any areas that contain these prisons. However, we would like the management of uh, the camps in particular, uh, something that has to be undertaken as a joint effort with the international community. We, we never said that we would shoulder this burden all by ourselves. We would like the international community to do more because it is a matter of a common security concern mm -hmm. for everybody. I want to ask you, because you alluded to it at the beginning, that this operation has been undertaken with the agreement between both presidents, the United States and Turkey. Uh, President Trump, as you can see, is facing a great deal of criticism by even members of his own party for what they believe is selling out American allies in this, in this important fight against ISIS. And he is now sort of backpedaling and saying things in public to warn Turkey against going, you know, all out. I mean, he's saying, if I judge that they have breached limits, I will destroy the economy. I've already done it in areas before. What do you think are the limits... And what do you make of the president's sort of, I mean, what do you understand as to whether the United States, the White House, accepts, backs your, uh, your, your, your action and where the limits might be? Um, now, President Trump and President Erdogan have reached an understanding over precisely what this operation is. Uh, and President Trump and President Erdogan will meet in Washington on the 13th of November to actually discuss further details. And I believe, you know, one of the details that will be discussed is particularly what we were just talking about, the ISIS fighters and the responsibility of the international community, something that we share uh, as a common vision with the United States. We both think that those foreign fighters that, you know, are uh, from Europe should actually be returned to the countries that they came from. So. Um, this is something that we are on the same page with, with the Americans. And we have had uh, talks, uh, you know, before this operation a couple of months ago with U.S. officials with regards to, uh, you know, the management of the ISIS captives. So uh, this is another issue that they will be talking about. So there's a clear understanding. Now, President Trump, obviously, I mean, I, I don't know what he meant by some of those tweets, but I would guess that, um, you know, he's also uh, concerned about the limits, but he all knows what uh, the scope of this operation is. So um, I, I don't think uh, that uh, given all the other statements that he's made recently, 
uh, in support of Turkey and this operation. And his very, very strong stance, I mean, you've, you've seen from the very recent tweets that he is absolutely determined to bring US troops home. And I think this has become a major policy focus for him, mm -hmm. uh, especially in, in the domestic uh, front, which you mentioned, All right. he, uh, uh, where uh, he's uh, giving this battle. So, yes. Yeah. Gugno, one of his latest tweets has said, any unforced or unnecessary fighting by Turkey will be devastating to their economy and to their very fragile currency. We are helping the Kurds financially and with weapons. There seems to be a bit of confusion there. Uh, I, and one thing I, I want to ask you, though, is that the Pentagon, the White House announced that they were closing the airspace to Turkey's flights. That's what they warned yesterday, trying to get you not to do what you're doing today. At least that's what it seemed. Are you, this, this is, is, is the airspace, airspace. Yeah. is the airspace closed over that area or are you using it freely? Well, at the moment, as you can see, that we are actually attacking uh, also from the air. So that actually speaks for itself, I guess. It does indeed. Gulno Aybat, thank you so much for joining us uh, from Ankara.